Interesting facts about famous people. The great director, John Ford, Westerns. Arguably, the American director that had the greatest impact on the Western genre, with a career that spanned the silent era until the 1960s. Mainly known for directing Westerns, some of the most acclaimed of them starring John Wayne. Wayne appeared in eight of the 14 Westerns John Ford directed since sound was introduced. Directing his last Western, Cheyenne Autumn, in 1964. If you enjoy this video, take a look at my channel for more. The link's in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Straight Shooting, 1917. John Ford directed quite a few two and three real westerns for Universal Studios, starring the popular actor Harry Carey from 1917 to 1921. One of the first of these was Straight Shooting, which miraculously survives in a complete version, discovered in Czechoslovakia back in the 1960s. The main difference here is that the film consists of five reels, with a running time of just over one hour, making it the first almost feature-length film Ford ever directed. As with a lot of other films Carey made with Ford, he plays a recurring character called Cheyenne Harry, who epitomises the good bad man, figures that we see John Wayne play in later Ford movies, such as Three Godfathers and The Searchers. The Iron Horse, 1924, the film that literally turned John Ford into a household name. The Iron Horse was only the third western he made for Fox out of the ten films he directed from late 1921 onwards. The epic tale of the building of the first transcontinental railroad across America was produced in an attempt to replicate the success of the covered wagon, produced the year before, and a big box office hit for the Paramount Movie Studios. At a running time of about two and a half hours, the film earns its title as a super western, Ford throwing in everything and the kitchen sink in order to pull the audience in. Three Bad Men, 1926. After the success of The Iron Horse, Fox put Ford to work on another super western a year or so later. This one again, centred on a love story, laid out against a background of real events. In this instance, the Dakota land rush of the 1870s. The film did not repeat the success previously enjoyed by The Iron Horse, despite the film being the better of the two. George O'Brien again takes the lead, this time playing a cowboy from Ireland by the name of Dan O'Malley. The three bad men of the title, Bull, Spade and Mike, rescue a young woman, Lee Carlton, played by Olive Borden, after her father has been murdered, with George eventually falling in love with her. Three Bad Men is closer in style to Ford's later westerns rather than The Iron Horse, whilst the characters of the title are the natural descendants of Carrie's Cheyenne Harry. They also provide the template for the more complex characters that inhabit Ford's sound films. Ethan Edwards in particular. Drums Along the Mohawk, 1939. John Ford was just as prolific in his early sound career as he was in the silent period. Of course it helped that he was working, most of the time anyway, within the Hollywood studio system so a lot of films were geared up to go in terms of pre-production before the director actually got involved. Taking all of that into account, it's still amazing that in the space of one year, three films by Ford were all released in the same year, 1939. Along with Stagecoach, we also got Young Mr. Lincoln and Drums Along the Mohawk. All of these films are bona fide Hollywood John Ford classics. And this was before Ford 
went on to win back-to-back -back Oscars a few years later with The Grapes of Wrath and How Green Was My Valley. Not strictly a proper western, as the action is set in New York State. Drums Along the Mohawk is Ford's first colour film and tells the story of a community living on the edge of the frontier at the time of the American War of Independence. My Darling Clementine, 1946, the jewel in the crown of Ford's non-John Wayne westerns. Orson Welles once praised Ford as the greatest poet that cinema has given us, and My Darling Clementine is cinematic poetry at its finest. Using Monument Valley as a backdrop to the story of Wyatt Earp's unrequited love with Clementine of the title, Ford manages to harvest a career best performance from Victor Mature of all actors. As Earp's sidekick, Doc Holliday, and a definitive portrayal of Earp himself from Henry Fonda. Fonda's performance is note perfect, a role I don't think John Wayne could have bettered if he'd had the chance. In fact, there's so much to recommend in this film that I don't know where to start. The set piece of the film is, of course, the legendary gunfight at the OK Corral. Wagon Master, 1950. This film doesn't tend to garner much attention these days, perhaps because there are no big names in the cast, but it deserves a wider audience. The main stars of the film, Ben Johnson and Harry Carey Jr., head up a wagon train consisting of a group of Mormons who are literally looking for the promised land. The wagon train is threatened by the Clegg Gang, a family of outlaws on the run after having pulled a robbery and shot an innocent clerk. The Mormons are accompanied by the members of the Travelling Medicine Show, so cue lots of music and dancing along the trail as the wagon train heads towards its destination. The ensemble acting of Johnson, Carey, Ward Bond and other members of the Stockford Acting Company is embellished by the presence of Joanna Drew, she wore a yellow ribbon, Jane Darwell, Grapes of Wrath, and Alan Mowbray, My Darling Clementine. Sergeant Rutledge, 1960. Woody Strode was honoured that Ford had entrusted him with the part of the Buffalo Soldier, Sergeant Rutledge. Strode said, quote, that, you never see a Negro come off a mountain like John Wayne before. I had the greatest glory hallelujah ride across the Pecos. And I carried the whole black race across that river. The film itself doesn't really live up to an important step on the road to civil rights for African Americans. But however, it is a worthy film in its own right, albeit a box office failure at the time. Although the story should revolve more around Strode's character, who has been falsely accused of the rape and murder of a white woman, it panders to the mainly white audience of the time by highlighting the relationship between the army lawyer assigned to defend Rutledge, played by Jeffrey Hunter, and the woman he loves, played by Constance Towers. Two Road Together, 1961. Ford said he did the film as a favour for the head of Paramount Studios at the time, Harry Cohen. A curious mix of drama and comedy, in some ways pre-echoing the weird Dodge City comedy interlude that crops up halfway through Cheyenne Autumn, which I'll discuss later. The story is almost a rerun of The Searchers, in which an attempt is made to rescue a group of kidnapped white captives from the Comanches. James Stewart as a cynical sheriff and Richard Widmark as a cavalry officer are just too old for their roles, both of them at the time practically bald and going deaf. Ford embellishes the project with a number of trademark visuals and plot lines. He steals from his own film, My Darling Clementine at one point, where Stuart warns off a couple of gamblers who have just arrived in town. But the film comes nowhere near being a classic Ford Western. Cheyenne Autumn, 1964. Running just over two and a half hours plus intermission, filmed in Super Panavision 70 and bankrolled and promoted by Warner Brothers Studios as an event movie. Here is an opportunity for John Ford, now in his late 60s, to go out with a bang with his penultimate movie. Ford's attitude towards the plight of the Native Americans had become more liberal over time and the subject matter. The true story of the Comanche tribe who left their reservation in Oklahoma 
to return to their native land in Yellowstone, nearly 2,000 miles away, provided the director with a chance to put the record straight regarding the treatment of the Native Americans by the military. Ford said, whilst on location in 1963 in Monument Valley for the film, let's face it, we've treated them very badly. It's a blot on our shield. We've cheated and robbed, killed, murdered, massacred, and everything else. A stellar cast including Richard Whitmark, James Stewart, Carol Baker, Carl Malden, and Edward G. Robinson. How could Ford fail to deliver? what should rightly have been a classic western to compare with The Searchers, and she wore a yellow ribbon. The film incorporated members of Ford's beloved Navajo tribe, and to retain a certain element of authenticity, the Native American characters spoke their dialogue in what was supposedly Cheyenne language, but was actually Navajo. However, the movie is badly let down by the misjudged Dodge City sequence, which turns out to be some kind of comic interlude involving James Stewart and Wyatt Earp and Arthur Kennedy as Doc Holliday, that has only a tenuous link to the main narrative. The film never really recovers from that moment on, which is a shame, because Ford deserved better at this stage in his career. So in the final analysis, an interesting failure, a failure nonetheless. And a supporting cast of thousands. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to get my new videos. Share with your friends. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.